accepting this invitation, Werner. It's wonderful to have you here. One of the interesting clusters of ideas that come up in my mind as you speak is the importance walking has for you. And you have sometimes likened uh, walking to filmmaking and seen a relationship between the two. I would be careful to call it walking. There's no real expression in, in English. I, I would call it traveling on foot. And, and in our minds, to move at a certain pace and seeing things with intimacy and seeing the details and having en route, uh, you, you, you have only substantial encounters. Many people may not know that you make your home Los Angeles. Los Angeles and um, if I'm not mistaken, you are known to say that Los Angeles is perhaps the only place in America with substance. Well, I would say, yes, you find it funny, I know that, yes. Uh, but uh, Los Angeles is much more than, than just filmmaking. In the last half century, almost every single important cultural trend and technological trend originated from California, uh, like computers, like uh, free speech movement, like uh, uh, accepting gay and lesbian people as an integral part of society, like, um, you just name it, on and on and on. Let's move you backwards now to yeah. your very early years. Um, the very first few years you spent in a very small village near Munich. The, the remotest place that my mother could find, who got frightened because the house next to us was bombed and where we lived was half destroyed and, and there was under a, a huge pile of debris, glass shards and, and, and uh, bricks. But, and I was only two weeks old, but unhurt. So she fled into the mountains and we got stuck there. So I grew up without knowing technology. It's strange that I'm making films and I, I did not even know that cinema existed until I was 11, when a traveling projectionist arrived at uh, the schoolhouse. What are your earliest memories of that time? It was dangerous because we had found a lot of weapons that were uh, dropped and hidden by the last SS men <coughs> fleeing into the mountains. And at age four I was in possession of a submachine gun, a functioning submachine gun. And, and my brother had a hand grenade. And, and I tried to shoot a bird, a crow actually, because we were always hungry. So hunger is one of the great uh, reminiscences of, of that time, two and a half years of, of hunger. Let's get to one of the core subjects of our evening, which is why or is the 20th century a mistake? Yeah, I, I doubt very strongly uh, what the 20th century has, has done to us, to the human race. And I, I mean not only that we have witnessed uh, the worst cataclysmic wars that the world has seen just in one century, uh, uh, that we had communism and fascism, the Nazis and, and all the consequences. It's many, many other things. I, I do believe that uh, highly technological civilization that we are living right now is not sustainable. Resources are being wasted in a way that is completely and utterly unhealthy and, and is not sustainable. But for you, it, it started, I mean, the, the mistake, uh, the misguided nature yeah. of human beings, if I understand you well, has a very long history. It started sure, yes, a long, it started when Petrarch went to the Mont Ventoux. Yes, well, that's one of the, the sins of civilization. Why do you climb mountains? And I have been with some of the mountain climbers like Reinhold Messner. They always had the feeling, yeah, we have to conquer it and we have to, they speak in military terms of conquest, which I have abandoned by now because there's nothing more to conquer. And I think uh, there was a mistake there. It was the end of, of, uh, of, of something mysterious about our planet. Adventure, which, and I cannot stand the term adventure nowadays. I lower my head in charge 
it has degenerated in, in such an obscenity that you can go to the travel agency and book an adventure trip to New Guinea, to the headhunters, to the cannibals. The travel on foot is virtuous. Tourism is sin, period, as simple as that. We see uh, embarrassments like tree huggers, and they, they are concerned about the panda bear, and they are concerned about the well-being of salad leaves. But we have overlooked that 6,000 languages still left, still left. But by 2050, only 15% of these languages will survive. I, I find it most enraging that, uh, that people hug whales. Who hugs the last speaker of an uh, Inuit language in Alaska? Nobody. Nobody cares about them. You've spoken they about yourself them. as a good soldier of cinema. Yes, but that's more like a metaphor uh, of, of someone who tries to hold out at an outpost that has been abandoned by, <laughs> by almost everyone around and, and, and not being afraid and, and, and having a sense of duty. I have a sense of duty. Uh, but but I, I think there's something, I'm after something much deeper, some, some sort of, a, of an ecstasy of truth, uh, something where we step beyond ourselves something that happens in religion sometimes, like medieval mystics, uh, a, 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 an understanding of God in, an ex, in, in, in form of ecstasies. Yes, it is possible, and it's possible in music and in poetry and in cinema, and we are not, not really looking after it, but it's, it's very, very elusive. Truth is extremely elusive.